This might get a little weird, so sorry. A while ago, the question was posed to me. If you could add or remove procedural generation from any game or thing, what would you choose and how would that change it? My gut reaction was, I'll add it to a bunch of things, of course, because that would mean adding a new layer of replayability, discovery, dynamic, reactive content. You know, with the enormous caveat that the procedural generation is actually done well enough to approximate the game's existing content. But then I considered the or in that question. Add or remove. Remove, well, well, that got me thinking. Now, this being proc jam and all, I assume that most of the things on our minds will be related to adding procedurality to what we make. But perhaps there's value to be had in exploring the space that surrounds a certain notion to better understand the contours of the thing itself. So let's set aside what it means to add procedurality for a moment, to look beyond the procedural generation and examine the space around it. Now, I suppose it might be pretty interesting to have a roguelike, for instance, that has exclusively handcrafted levels, maybe 200, all divided up into 10 different 20-floor dungeons. What would that mean to the pace, to the feel of the game? What would it do to genre conventions? Or how about a No Man's Sky-style game? 10,000 player-made worlds to be shared and explored. The game comes with a powerful world ender that lets players craft their planets down to the tree and then fling them out into the stars for other players to stumble across. That, that actually sounds kind of rad. But what is the most fundamental generated space? And how would it change if it weren't actually generated? Well, it's beneath us. It's around us, it's within us, it's this world, this universe. What better example of a thing to change all of by removing procedural generation? So imagine, if you will, a world without procedural generation. Not a world in which procedural generation was never invented, but a reality in which nothing is procedurally generated. Of course, your first thought might be that it wouldn't exist at all. After all, our universe is kind of driven by procedure by chemical reactions and physics and evolution and all these wonderful processes that eternally give rise to new and unexpected combinations of life and of matter. But an absent existence isn't very interesting to talk about, so let's say it looks a lot like ours. Because that's kind of the goal, to make a world like ours. If we imagine adding procedurality to a game with the intent of approximating its existing content, then the same should be done when removing it from a thing that features it heavily. We seek to approximate the generated content. So here, the orbits of planets are hard-coded, and the sun has its brightness set to 255, and there's a designer, one supposes, who has placed every stone, building, tree, and river just so. But to what end? Just a really big chat room that mostly talks about itself. Or maybe... Maybe this is just level one, and level two is when we finally get off this rock and start living on another planet. We'll touch down and realize that the Mars we've been seeing from Earth for so long was just a problem of draw distance, and suddenly a whole civilization pops into view, and the water shader starts rendering, which makes all those ocean floors and riverbeds make a lot more sense. But this is, this is all getting too caught up in the language of games and of technology. It's not about technology, it's about design, it's about intent. So what are the major strengths of a designed world over a procedural one? Control, over pacing, over reward, cohesion of environment, of context from one situation to the next, but also diversity, the ability to stray from the formula when it no longer suffices, the knowing that what you've put forth is doable by a human, the knowing that there is an end, the knowing not only of anything at all, but potentially of everything. The shared experience of walking down a path that literally everyone else has also walked down. And the knowing that. Maybe, maybe in this handcrafted world we could all understand each other just a little bit better. Maybe this world has been made so that we all face the same sorts of obstacles, receive the same rewards. We could know not just superficially what others have been through, but truly empathize, because we've been there too. We, we may be different people, but the loop stays the same. 
you see an older neighbor who has just gotten married, and you know that when you reach that point in your life, you too will find a lasting love. Your younger sibling weeps over a red smudge on the carpet that used to be a hamster. And you remember when you were there, when you were them, weeping over your dead goldfish. It kind of makes me think of MMOs, which frequently have the same sorts of quests for players, regardless of their factions or starting zones. Gather 40 mountain herbs, write 20 book reports, fetch the priest, call an ambulance, your dog is dead, your bird was eaten. He says yes, she'll say of course, and it hurts all the same, and it elates all the same. Different quest givers, same quest. That is to say, our trials may have different superficial motivations, but they all have the same core and serve the same ends. Well, is that, is that interesting? Is that a life worth living? A reality worth living in? I don't know. Maybe. Let's take another approach. Let's indulge in a bit of solipsism, if that's all right with you. Forget about the designer of the world for a moment. It's not about them. It's about us about we who live within this crafted reality. Imagine a life, a single human life, from beginning to end, full of choices, full of mistakes and triumphs and love and heartache, and then they die. Now imagine some other soul gets to inhabit that body, relive that life from the beginning, making different choices, different mistakes, different triumphs, and then they die. And that's, that's it. That's basically the whole scenario. This just keeps happening forever. In this vision of proceduralistness, the lack of procedurality is more a function of starting conditions. We all play the same game, but it's, it's open world, you know? Well, what's the difference then between this reality and the last? Instead of different quest giver, same quest, it's now same quest giver, same quest. Like, literally, you're living the same life, meeting the same people. But... I think there are a couple important distinctions to be made here. The first is that this reality only has to care about one player at a time, so it can be made without concessions to potential interference from others. Yes, everyone gets the same life to live, but for its duration, every other human in the world is ruled by hard determinism, but the player alone possesses the free will to deviate. You see the solipsism at play here. The other distinction I see is that the last reality, by design, was crafted to give people from otherwise disparate backgrounds and places a similar experience, to take the diverse and converge it into a sameness. This reality, on the other hand, is an experiment in the opposite direction, to take the same and entice it to splinter and diverge into uniqueness. So now we come back to the designer. If we go with this idea that the purpose of this reality is to entice the same to diverge into uniqueness, well, to that end, Perhaps we can imagine that this world is designed with an abundance of no-turning-back points for the current inhabitant, the embodiment, the interactee, the player, whatever you want to call them. Their life is a series of splintering choices and excessive agency. Not just small choices like getting on or off a bus a few seconds sooner or later, because it's kind of easy to imagine that small deviations like that correct themselves over time. But decisions of heroism cowardice and passivity that can define a person for years or for a lifetime, choosing from one of several mutually exclusive friendships as a child, ignoring violence against a certain group of people, or trying to stop it, or participating in it even, picking a side in a civil war, choosing which lies and truths to tell when the stakes are high. And to you, that may just sound like how life already works, but I think it's important to note that not everyone lives a life where these sorts of choices come frequently to the foreground. It's easy to imagine a life where many choices are relatively easy to make, with only a few big turning points. But imagine a life where, no matter how far you wander from your initial starting conditions, and no matter how settled you become, or try to become, the world still cares about you enough to force you to choose something. Is that interesting? Is that a life worth living? A reality worth living in? I don't know. But I'm actually not done with that last reality yet. I know we're kind of straying from the idea of procedurality into some kind of weird philosophy zone, and I'm frankly not qualified to talk about that level of 
Yeah. <laughs> and I know I've generally been talking about removing procedurality, but there's another question that I want to ask about that last scenario. If you were living in a generated world rather than a designed one, would it even matter? After all, the world looks just like ours, and while you're living in it, there'd be no way to tell, really. You'd play it once, and then you die. Let's say there's a Mario game that's procedurally generated. Every level is generated from one scene when you first start the game, but you can only play through it exactly once in your life, and you're the only person in the world who ever plays it. And because it's been sort of a trend in this thought process, let's say that the levels are generated in such a way that there are no obvious giveaways to the fact that it's generated. It competently approximates a normal, decent Mario game. No one ever tells you it's generated. No one ever says it isn't. Does the fact that it's generated matter? If you ever found out, would your opinion of the experience change? Why bother generating something if the procedure only runs once and no one ever knows? Alternatively, why bother handcrafting it when you could generate it to the same effect? Personally, I think there's something missing from both this reality and this Mario game, which is context. A place beyond the world to discuss it. A control group. Something to hold it against and contrast it to. In the previous reality, the one where everybody's living the same loops, it's known by those within it that they live the same lives and follow the same patterns. They can talk with each other about the processes of the world, about the design of their reality, whether they call it that or not. But in this one life reality, your life is just a life, and you live it. And everyone gets the same life to live, but you don't know that. Maybe the universe doesn't even exist before you're born, and the designer of the universe only made 110 years of content, so even if you get super old, you, you just reach the end, and there's nothing left. You live, you die, and then nothing. There needs to be some kind of context. Maybe there's an afterlife, where those who have lived can just talk about their lives. The differences between them, the similarities. The afterlife is just a chat room, maybe. A forum. But that it exists allows those who have lived to give context and therefore meaning to the reality they experienced. To the life they lived. Is this... Afterlife? Is this part of the design, though? Is this greater context even within the purview of the crafted reality or its designer? I would argue that to invoke procedurality is to imply a known context, either with one's own previous experience or through comparisons to the experiences of others. And procedurality gains its meaning through this context. We are able to re-experience procedural content and, in doing so, compare the various iterations of itself with itself. We are able to talk about procedural content in a, with each other in a way that lets us make value judgments on each of its many iterations, of its many possible outputs, and marvel when an algorithm produces something particularly brilliant. This isn't to suggest in any way that these same qualities can't be explored in non-procedural content, nor that generated content can't contain meaning, but only that the meaningfulness of procedurality itself, of the very act of generating something algorithmically, in large part depends on our being aware that it is in fact generated. So we've considered a couple proceduralist realities and what proceduralistness might mean for our existence, but what does that tell us about procedural generation itself? What have we been able to learn by looking at the negative space around the notion of procedural generation? Well, let's go back to the initial question that prompted this whole line of thought. If you could add or remove procedural generation from any game or thing, what would you choose, and how would that change it? My initial reaction was that adding procedural generation to my favorite games would be the obvious route, so that I could enjoy them for longer and experience them anew, potentially indefinitely. But I hadn't really considered what might be lost in doing so. It might be a little ironic, but many of my favorite games tend to be very, very tightly crafted and often somewhat linear experiences. My enjoyment of Yoshi's Island, for instance, is almost entirely predicated on the fact that every aspect of it was made deliberately and very well. To procedurally generate Yoshi's Island as a game would not only remove some of the aforementioned benefits of non-procedural content, cohesion, the control, the diversity of experiences, which are directly responsible for its being one of my favorite games ever, but it would also diminish my appreciation of the game as a work. Similar 
to how knowing that something is generated gives meaning to the fact of its generation. Knowing that something is deliberate gives meaning and value to that deliberateness. Admittedly, Yoshi's Island wasn't the first game that popped into my head when I first heard this question. Zelda was. I love Zelda games, and they seem much more amicable to the idea of being proceduralized. They generally follow a pretty straightforward overworld dungeon key item boss type formula that could be translated into an algorithm pretty easily. But when I think back to my experiences playing Zelda games, I realize that a large part of my enjoyment and value of these games was the shared experience of ex exploration and discovery with my friends who were all playing the games at the same time. The camaraderie fostered by overcoming the same dungeons and sharing the same found secrets and speculating about rumors of how to find this hidden thing that we didn't know was even in the game or not. Would these sorts of interactions be lost in a procedural Zelda? Well, probably not. Not entirely, at least, but it would undoubtedly have an effect on the social interactions that form around the game. So, I've been speaking sort of in extreme terms. The idea that an entire reality can be generated or designed. The idea that a procedural Mario or Zelda game can be made indistinguishable from a handcrafted one. But that's not really how the world works, at least not yet. We might get there eventually. But in the meantime, everything we do will have the fingerprints of our humanity on it. Everything we procedurally generate will have a bit of intention to it, some handcrafted elements mixed in, some decisions built into the algorithm that reflect what we value and expect of it. Adding or removing procedurality from something won't remove it from its context, but it will certainly change it. And I think it's important to be aware of these contexts when dealing with procedural stuff, like how they sit in relation to other generated content, how they sit in relation to handcrafted content, the means by which the generated content is experienced relative to its own iterations, and how people interact not only with the thing itself, but with each other around it and about it. With the context considered, maybe its influence can be planned around, or leveraged, or mitigated, or whatever. But it'll be just a little bit more knowing that you might be able to take advantage of. A little bit more knowing, not of everything, but maybe of something worthwhile. Uh. I'm Tyreek, by the way. I didn't. I didn't actually mention that anywhere. I I make games. I make. I make. I make game. Just one. Just one game, really. I've been working on it for a very long time. It's uh, it's this one. Uh. All right. See you around. I guess.